So we have technologies to do diagnostic work. We have te technologies to do prognostic and predictive work. We have voice medical coaches. We have Apple Watches that detect AFib and heart rate issues and gait abnormalities. We have mental health detection tools. We have a ton of information going on in cardiology and mental health, which are some of the hottest areas. We have all of these imaging tools, which have actually been in present for really since the 80s, sometimes even a little earlier than that, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So they're everywhere. Um, and we know that if they're going to get any further, they are going to catalyze process changes. So remember, we're talking technology, process, and people. So from a process level, we know that those technologies that are everywhere, we aren't yet experiencing as a room. And for us to experience them as a room means that we've integrated them into everything else that's replacing, that they replace across our patient population, right? Which means if you are a patient with a healthcare disparity, um, if you are a patient with limited English proficiency, if you are a patient who has limited use of your hands, you have Parkinson's, et cetera, some of these technologies won't be available to you, which means we will have to continually staff for the lowest common denominator, even as we start to move groups further and further. And that's the new way we're thinking about the digital divide, that the problem is we leave patients with healthcare disparities of the other types behind, marginalized groups.